Paul was a religious man. He was the religious of the most religious. He says it himself. He says, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. Now, here again is a word that's taken a new meaning to us, Pharisee. If I call you a Pharisee, you would probably think that I am calling you a hypocrite. The terms have become synonymous in our day. Oh, you Pharisee. Oh, you hypocrite. You're just pretending. Well, there's some reason for that in the story of the Pharisees in Jesus' day, in the Gospels. But Pharisees were actually a sect of the Jews who were very righteous and holy. They were the conservative arm of the the temple of the religion of Judaism in the day. Some took it to an extreme that was wrong. For some, it was empty and hollow. But for many, they were the ones who were trying to follow God. They were the ones who believed that the book that they had, the Torah, was actually the Word of God and held firmly to it. If it isn't in there, I ain't doing it. And what it says in there, I'm doing it. They took it to extremes, but that's where they were. They were the party at the time who believed in the resurrection of the dead. They believed in miracles. One of the other parties that you would have encountered in your journey through the Gospels was the Sadducees. The Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe much in miracles and supernatural events. They were kind of the liberal arm of the day. Not unlike today, where within the household of faith, there are some at the extreme liberal side. I went to a school that was extremely literal, and I learned, well, Jesus didn't rise from the dead. People don't do that. Miracles don't happen. Have you ever seen a miracle in your life? Well, that's what I was taught. That's what many believe today an empty and hollow faith that in my own journey of faith, I came to the place of saying, okay, read this book. Seems like the whole second half of it is all about Jesus and his resurrection and how important that is. And you're telling me it didn't really happen. And about miracles and things changing, God moving in people's lives, and you're telling me, well, that can't happen. Well, let me ask you this. What are you doing to have in church? Why bother? If it ain't true, why bother? Man, you know, we all know there's plenty of other stuff to be doing this morning, right? There's always stuff to do on Sunday morning, more and more stuff as the days go on. Why be here if it isn't true? But I will be here every Sunday morning. And every time we can open the doors of this place because it is true. And like Paul, I'm a changed man. Paul was so radically religious that when this new sect of Christianity came out, said, I don't see that in the Torah. I don't see that in here. This is wrong. This is evil. They're saying God came in the flesh. That's blasphemy. I'm going to take care of these people. And so from a religious point of view, he's trying to stamp out Christianity. But God got hold of him. On his way, with letters in his pocket, authorizing him to go to Damascus and put people in jail, and maybe worse, simply for their faith, God knocked him straight off his horse. Knocked him blind. Interesting. Knocking him blind. Because the true fact was, he was blind. He was blind and needed to come to see. God showed him that by making him blind and not letting him see for three days. When Ananias, a godly man, gets a vision, and God says to him, hey, there's this guy named Saul, before he changed his name to Paul. This guy named Saul is down there You need to go lay hands on him and I'm going to heal him of his blindness. Ananias says, Lord, uh, you you, you do know who this guy is, right? You do know this is the guy that puts people in jail for calling on your name. And you're asking me to go down and pray in your name for this guy. Are you sure, Lord? 
He says, absolutely. He goes down and does it. Paul is a changed man. Paul becomes as radical for Jesus as he was for killing Christians. He's a changed man. And that's why there's a message in his heart that wherever he would go, he would speak of the change that God can bring through Jesus Christ.